talk a little about um, the, the projects uh, and sessions that are available in Bluebeam Studio. With physical distancing, uh, you're not going to be able to work together and collaborate uh, in person. Um, and that's what makes Bluebeam Review so valuable because almost from the beginning, they've had the ability to upload uh, files of different types uh, to the uh, web and have you access them almost from any type of platform from anywhere in the world. All you really need is an internet connection. And I'm just going to hope today that my internet connection stays solid, both from my phone and my laptop. So there's really just a, a couple of things uh, uh, that I want to explain ahead of time, and then we'll, Dan and I are going to dive in and create a project and create a session so you can see how that works. Uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about what Blooping Studio is. I've got a couple of quotes from the real world, uh, and then I think the online demo is really the best way to show the product. So the question comes up um, with uh, Bluebeam Studio. Let me go forward one slide just to see where I'm at. Okay, so um, the uh, question comes up when we talk about Bluebeam Review Studio. Uh, some people who are new to the product are like, well, what is that? Do I have to pay more for it? Um, is there a limitation on what I can store? Because <clears throat> usually most companies want to monetize uh, their products as much as they can. The nice thing about Bluebeam uh, is that uh, with Studio, that it comes with review. So every license of review that you own uh, basically allows you access to Studio. Now, Studio is really uh, basically online storage. It's kind of like uh, Dropbox or an FTP site uh, that you can basically store information on. But it's a lot more than that. Um, and I'll explain uh, uh, the, the two aspects of that. Um, Bluebeam uh, stores its files most likely uh, on an Amazon web server um, for the East Coast. I think it's a little bit south of here, and for other parts of the country, um, uh, it's stored uh, on, on various locations. So if you're wondering why uh, Jeff Bezos is going to become the first actual trillionaire, in the world, it's not from selling you uh, toilet paper online for a few bucks less than the um, <laughs> grocery store. It's actually, uh, the money is really being made through the uh, web services. People like Autodesk, as well as Bluebeam, uh, all of their project uh, stuff is actually stored up on uh, these web servers. So um, you can uh, upload uh, to the studio uh, site, and again, access it from anywhere in the world. It's very secure. Uh, I don't know what level of DOD uh, security it has. You can read about that on uh, the Bluebeam website, but it is very secure. Um, you may not want to use it if you're designing a new rocket ship or a fighter jet for the uh, Air Force uh, or the government, but short of that, it's, it's pretty darn secure. So the studio, uh, Program portion of the review program divides into two different um, uh, kinds of things. One is called studio projects, and one is called studio sessions. Now, studio projects, it's essentially a lightweight document management system. Um, so I'm going to create a project today. <clears throat> I wish they had called it something else because I always call my projects, my architectural projects, projects. So when I get the sessions, I'm going to talk about my projects and sessions, and it's going to <laughs> screw up everything. But projects really are going to allow you to just upload any kind of file that you have. They can be Word documents. They can be AutoCAD drawings. They can be CSV or Excel files um, uh, and PDFs as well. Uh, Revit uh, hasn't been included yet. Uh, I'm sure they're working on that, um, but you know, working on Revit files, especially um, when you are collaborating um, with work sets, it's, it's not really designed for that. But any of these other file types, uh, you can upload, and then if you have the software on your machine, you can open the document locally. Uh, these files can be uh, coordinated and synchronized back to your server in the office, 
so uh, everything will be totally up to date. And by having them online, you can really, again, access them at any time. So you can be working from home if you're sick or like we've been locked in for several months here, uh, or if you are out in the field, or if you have multiple offices uh, around the country and you don't want to do uh, VPN or other kinds of sharing of files. Um, there's unlimited storage. So that's wonderful, right? In a lot of places you get to a certain point. I get to a certain point and I get a notice from Dropbox or Google, hey, you know, you're running out of storage space. Do you want to upgrade and pay some more money, right? That's, that's called monetizing it. And uh, Bluebeam does not do that. Uh, it's also an unlimited number of users. So again, some sites, once you get to 50 users, you have to pay at a different level. Um, you can even invite users that don't use Bluebeam to a, a project. Uh, and you can also control attendee access rights. Okay. The idea, though, behind projects is that each of these files here, um, each of the files are accessed one at a time. So if I were to open uh, a file, I would basically be checking it out. Uh, I would then make it read only on the project uh, studio site. No one else can check it out to edit. They can check it out as read only. Once I'm done editing that file, um, I would check it back in. Uh, it will now become available for anyone else to work on. So this is collaborating, but collaborating on different files, not on the same file at the same time. And again, it can be really any file type you want. Now, studio sessions uh, are designed uh, a little bit differently. So they're intended as real-time collaboration. Uh, you don't have to use them that way, but that's the original intent. So the idea was we need to have a meeting about something. Maybe it's the architect and the owner. Maybe it's the architect and his um, consulting engineers. Maybe it's the GC and their subs that need to get together for a meeting. Um, or uh, maybe there's some issues out in the field and uh, we want to have an online meeting with the architect and the contractor and the owner. So we can set up a session that can be a one-time only deal. Uh, we upload up to 5,000 documents. The documents can be each up to a gigabyte in size. And trust me, if you have a PDF that's a gigabyte in size, please call us uh, over technical <laughs> support because your, your PDF is way, way too big. You're, you're making it way too dense and hard on yourself. Um, and you can have up to 500 users for um, a session. Um, now, it can only be PDFs, right? Only PDFs, so no other file type. Um, once the session is over, you can um, archive it and remove it from the web. Or you can set up a session that is for, let's say, comments. So, okay, we've gotten some revisions in from the architect. Uh, I'm going to uh, put a time limit on this session, say one week and people can uh, go online and do markups on there. So, so what I forgot to mention on the first one is that it's up to 500 users at the same time in the same file. So you could, it would be chaos, right? But you could have 500 people marking up the same PDF at the same time. But if you put it up there for a week or so, you can have it so people can comment at the end of the week. Um, they can no longer access that particular session, and again, you would be able to archive it. Or you can just leave it up. So you can just upload your PDFs and just leave your session open for as long as you want. There's no time limit, um, and that may people can be using that session as if they were working in the office. Um, after a month or two, I believe, uh, Bluebeam sends you an email that says, hey, you haven't really been using this for a while, so by Friday, we're gonna be archiving it. Um, but if you wanna keep using it, just let us know by going back into that particular project. Again, you can invite uh, users uh, that don't own Bluebeam. Uh, you can run Bluebeam in demo mode, um, and you can also control attendee access. So um, we'll show that. So here are a couple of quotes from Mortensen Construction Company. Um, the first one, 
talks about um, being able to work with external partners, giving them the means to mark up uh, their drawings electronically. It also talks a little bit about custom tool chests. Uh, we are going to do that in a session. I believe it's next week. Um, the tool chest allows you to create standardized markup tools that everyone uh, marking up a drawing can use so you have consistency in that particular file that you're marking up. Um, these um, um, inside of the tool chest are tool sets. These can be exported and imported so you can sort of create this standardization. Um, the other thing uh, that's quoted down below is that, again, um, there is no wasted time sending files back and forth. Everyone's in the same file at the same time. So with that, I think we'll go over to Bluebeam. Let's see if I can get there. And um, we will start up a session. Dan is here. Uh, he's in background uh, quietly at this point. And uh, I'm going to be working with Dan. Um, on this, I'm going to leave the session open. I probably shouldn't. <laughs> I'm not going to restrict it to attendees. So anyone who's watching who may have a copy of Bluebeam open, if you feel like jumping into a file, that's, that's fine as well. I'm going to close this particular file down, and I'm going to come over here um, on the left side of the screen. It happens to be where I have the tool for Studio. Um, again, you can customize your interface and I'll go ahead and sign in. It'll use your uh, Bluebeam ID. If you have not created an account yet, then what you will do first is create an account. Um, when you create your password, make sure you remember it because, uh, yeah, if you forget it like I do on a regular basis, you'll have to reset your password. So I'm going to hope here <laughs> I actually can remember it. And I'll click sign in. Okay, so uh, I'm now into uh, Bluebeam Studio. Up here on the left, let's see, here we go, uh, are two little icons. Um, the first icon next to the word studio, I don't know if you can see it, it's almost so small I can't see it. Um, it says projects. And then over here, it says sessions. So I'm gonna left click on projects. Uh, and I'm going to create a new project. So I'm going to click on the little plus symbol that's right there. And I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to call it architecture, see if I can spell correctly, architecture set. And I'll go ahead and pick OK. And um, it's now here. So it says, what do I want to do? Do I want to create new folders? Do I want to upload files? Or do I want to upload a folder? I'll click, I want to upload a folder. I'll come up to my um, Bluebeam folder. I have one here called Architectural Set Project. And I'll go ahead and select that folder. Now, what it's doing is actually loading files uh, in background, right? So you can see that some of these files uh, may not have fully loaded yet. We've got these little symbols on here. Um, and uh, in the past, and you can see they're loading. In the past, while these were loading, you really couldn't do anything else uh, in your uh, file uh, while they were loading uh, or in, inside of review. But now with this particular release, um, you could continue to upload files and continue to work. Okay, so I am going to look at inviting some people. So I'm going to come over to here. Now, I don't really have to invite uh, Dan at this point, but I'm going to anyway. All that Dan would have to do is uh, click on trying to get into a project and then use this project ID, which is 398. 321948. But what I would do is I could come over to here and click plus, and I could do, see if I can spell this right. Um, I usually rely on um, <laughs> other things to do it for me. Uh, Microsolresources.com. Right? And then Dan would get an email from me saying that he's been invited um, to attend. Now, I can copy the invitation and send it to other people. 
I can add a message if I want. I also have the ability to create these uh, groupings, right? And um, I would have had ahead of time, I could have created these different groups. So if I'm working with same colleagues on a regular basis, I, I don't have to keep typing in all of their individual uh, names. Okay. So I'm going to pick OK to that. Uh, I have sent an invitation. Okay, so Dan should have gotten an invitation and um, he would be able to come in and access these files. Um, now, um, Dan will tell me one of the files he's accessing and then I, I will try to access it as well at a certain point. Um, there are some other little items up in the upper right here. There's an add drop down. So again, you can add folders. There are some actions that you can set or synchronizing back with the office. You can also show checkout uh, review. Um, you also have the ability to sort, um, do thumbnails, or do a tree-like structure, right? So there's all those different settings available there. Um, underneath, or, or uh, just underneath where it says architecture set, there are these little um, uh, uh, sliders that if I click on that, will bring up my project settings dialog box. Now with my project settings, oh, it looks like we've got uh, two users, right? Um, with my project settings, uh, it's telling me the size of the project. Here is my user access. Um, I can restrict users. So by default, it's set to restrict users. That means that only the people I've invited can attend. I'm gonna remove that probably foolishly at this point, but what that means is that anyone who has a copy of uh, Bluebeam Review can now access this uh, project by using the project number. Keep in mind there's over a million users of the software, so it's probably a good idea to restrict access in, in the real world. Um, you can set permissions. So right now, um, I can set it so that the attendees can, um, let's see, they can't send invitations, they can't manage user access, they can't manage uh, uh, permissions, but they could uh, send a PDF from here into a session. So if I wanted to do this, I could say, yeah, the, there's a PDF in here, maybe you want to load that over um, into a session. So again, I can control uh, everything here. I can also control um, uh, permissions. So for my project root, um, it's set to read, but I can, uh, that would inherit from parent. These other ones, I can basically say, oh, let's go ahead and make everything sort of read right. So I can make the project root read only, but I can control um, the these other uh, folders that way. Um, so, you know, you have a lot of power uh, there for setting this up. In addition, you will get notifications on a fairly regular basis from uh, Bluebeam. And so within settings, there are some blue hyperlinks here uh, in this dialog box. Um, and if you want to not be notified uh, as often as um, a Bluebeam chooses to notify you, you can click on that. It will open a web page. Uh, that allows you to control your different levels of uh, notification. Okay. okay. Um, Dan, have you checked anything out? Dan, are you there? Am I still online? I'm not sure Dan has, has um, yes. checked anything out. Uh, but let me, yeah, uh, which one have you? I am, so I was, I was actually working on the document. On my okay, so which, which document? <laughs> Uh, the second document, the South Revision 1. In Revision 1. Okay, so this document here, um, the Revision, uh, sorry, let me get over here to Revision 1, this file here. Um, yes. Yeah, so this, if I double, if I right click on that file, you'll notice I don't have a, a checkout option for that particular file. Let me go over to Revision 1. So you are in this file here, yes? So if I click on that, right, I, I don't have the ability to check it out, right, because Dan has checked it out. So um, I have, since I started the project, I have the ability to revoke checkout. But at this point, all I can do 
is open that up, I'm going to say no to split view, but I am in read only mode. So this file has a little lock uh, in the upper corner and it actually shows a person in there, right? So um, that, that's, I can't work on that one. Now, if I double left click on the one next to it uh, and open that one up, I have it locked, right? I didn't check it out, but you'll notice that the little icon uh, at the end of the, or the beginning of the name isn't a person, um, but it's a lock. So I can uh, right click on that and I can say to, um, actually let me left click on that and do checkout. So now I've checked that out, which means I can now work on this file, um, put in markups, for example, if I wanted to, um, let's see if I can just drag something on there, right? I'll come over here to my tool chest and drop something in um, over, let's say drop something here, all right? And then uh, when I'm done with that, I can go ahead and say, well, I'm gonna go ahead and close this file. Um, do I wanna save it? Yes. Um, and I'll put a comment in, say just added uh, some markups. And I'll check it back in. You also can choose whether it's a major or a minor revision. You can also update on your server. So I can come over to here and um, we've got all of this going on. Um, for the particular file, uh, there are my different actions. I could say show checkout uh, review. It looks like um, there are no files checked out at the moment. What's nice about this is that, oh, it does actually, it looks like Dan still has that one checked out. What's nice about this is that I can also right click on this file and tell it to show me the revision history, right? And so every time the file is checked out and checked in, uh, you will have a record of that. And you can go back to any one of these uh, records and you can open that up and see actually what was worked on at that point. Okay. Um, okay, so that is uh, a session. Uh, not a lot of action going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and close. I, I just went uh, read, oh, yeah. I also a just project. went Sorry. and uh, returned mine as well. I checked mine back in. Okay. So there's my first mistake. So this is a project, right? So these are, this is a project um, and it's not like all that exciting. Um, the, um, the work that you're doing, you're sort of doing individually and you really don't notice other people working on their particular files. So let me go ahead and um, I'm gonna go ahead and hop out of this particular project. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the set. So let me go ahead on back in and click on sessions. So with sessions, again, I will create a new session by clicking on, sorry, that's projects. Let me click on session and create a new, let's try that again, sessions. Let's click the plus, new session, there we go. So I'm gonna create a new session and I think I'm just calling this um, uh, demo session, let's call it. I will go ahead and add uh, users uh, in a minute, but right now it wants to know what files I want to put in here. So I will click add, and I am going to come over to um, here, and I will use the building session folder, and pick open. Oh, it wants me to get all the way down. And I will highlight all of these and pick open. So those are uploaded. And now what I'm gonna do is set my options here. Can they save the files? Can they print the files? Can they mark up the files? Um, can they send an alert? Can people add documents? I'll say sure, people can add documents to this session. Do I wanna restrict attendees by email address? Again, in the real world, uh, the answer is probably yes to that. I'm going to turn that off. Do you want to set a time limit? In other words, do you have a week to work on this or a few hours to work on that? I'm going to leave it open at this point. I'll go ahead and pick OK. Now, the next thing that should happen is that a dialog box should pop up and should ask me 
to uh, send out invitations. So again, I could do that uh, by clicking on the plus symbol, or I can click on power groups, and I think um, I think Dan is in the demo group, but I'll, I'll show that in a minute. And I'll go ahead and pick OK. Oh, yep, there he is. And again, I can send a message. Uh, please join my session. And I'll pick OK. And it says Dan's uh, email box is being flooded by me with these invitations. Now, <clears throat> he can use that invitation to get in, or at this point, he can simply uh, go into sessions and put in the number 763-850-222. And when Dan joins, he will now be listed here as an attendee. So uh, we'll just wait a second for Dan. And what I can do is start to open these drawings up, right? So these drawings can be opened, um, really any of these drawings. Uh, and Dan is now in, right? So Dan is in, and Dan will be putting uh, markups in, potentially. Uh, if I look down here in the list, Dan has joined, and he's put a note in that he's in. Now, just below there, there's a chat window, and I can chat and say, great. Right? So I can put in a, a chat. Uh, one of the other things that's kind of nice is that if I zoom in on something and I want to put something uh, like uh, this in and a note and says, look here. Um, what I can do is I can say right now, look here, and you won't be able to see it exactly, but um, Dan, when he clicks on that text message, Oh, and Tara has joined too. Uh, nice. <laughs> so, um, uh, Tara, have you used the software before? <laughs> so, um, so Dan says, got it. Now, if Dan puts a comment in uh, somewhere, uh, I can click on that, right? So, if Dan is in a different file, for instance, and he puts a comment in, I can click on that. So, while we can't have like a phone conversation, of course, we could have a Zoom session going on at the same time that we have this going on, but um, uh, so that we could actually talk back and forth. Um, you can use these, um, uh, Tara's left the session, so I can see that. You can put these comments in to see what's going on. Um, all of these comments that are going in are also being added to the markup list down here at the bottom. Uh, the only people that can edit the markup while you're in a session is the person who created that markup. So I can't change Dan's markups. He can't change mine. Of course, once we have something um, downloaded uh, for an archive, you, you have access to that. But um, um, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. So here is the record of everything that's going on. Um, notifications and pending. So what's pending? Well, I might have to go out in the field to check something. Maybe I need to see what's going on with uh, an electrical panel maybe or something in this um, utility room or janitor's closet. So I might have to come up here to the top and leave the trailer where I have uh, internet connection. So uh, rather than leaving the project, I simply click on that and say that I'm gonna work offline. I now put on my hard hat, head out into the field, uh, come over here, add a cloud to this, and then what I wanna do is there's a problem with uh, an electrical panel with some loose wires, so what I'm gonna do is I will right click on that cloud, and I am going to come down and add a capture. And I can now take a picture with my camera, right? So on my iPad or my Surface, um, I don't know if it runs on Amazon Fire or not. We'll have to look at that. Um, but if it did, you could take a camp picture. Um, or if you're running it off of your phone, you could do that. I'm going to do it from file. Uh, I'll come back up to uh, my, um, actually come down to my C drive. Uh, I'll come down to, uh, up to Bluebeam. Demo, down to training, over to Imperial, and images. 
And let's say I took a picture of this, um, and that will now be on there, okay? Uh, I trudge back into the trailer. I come back up over here uh, to the where I was disconnected. Now, right now, it's under pending. So that's waiting to be added back into the record. I rejoin, uh, and then that will be added back in. It's waiting, waiting, waiting. Should It should have gone back in. It did. Okay. So that's now down here in uh, the record list. So there's that cloud. By the way, that capture, if you click on it, it will actually bring up the image. So that's kind of a nice feature. You don't have to actually have to have an image in the file. You can actually use that. Okay. So that that's really what's going on. Now, another thing that can be done is that um, you can have people follow you. So um, if I want to follow Dan, for example, uh, and see what he's working on, uh, to the right of his name, is a, a little person, and I can click on that, and now I will be following Dan around. So as Dan is working in here, he's now kind of in charge of this particular session. So he's able to guide uh, the session. Um, uh, so you can kind of turn control over uh, to different people uh, so that you can see what they are actually doing. Um, if you're in charge of that particular session, I can click on Dan again and um, uh, let's see, uh, click on Dan again, and uh, I don't see double click, and I don't see where he's uh, or do I see where he's moving? He's still in charge. Let's see if I can uncheck. Oh, I just sent a message to follow me. <laughs> okay, so because I'm in charge of that particular session. Okay, so um, you can you can follow people or unfollow. Or if the person's in charge, you can ask everyone to uh, follow you by doing that. Right. Okay. Uh, again, you have access to the people in the session by clicking on the little person here, um, and you can also send out uh, additional invitations by clicking on that. Once a session is finished, um, you can end it. Or I can simply leave a session. So I could, while Dan is still working, I could say, you know, I'm going to go grab lunch uh, or, uh, you know, I'm going to work on this tomorrow. So uh, I'm not going to actually close a session. I'm really just leaving that particular session. It uh, looks like I have uh, another session <laughs> called demo session. Um, so uh, if I want to go back in, I simply click on it and I come back into the session. <clears throat> so that way you can just leave your PDFs up online, grab a sip of water, um, and um, uh, you can have other people have free access to them for as long as they want. Now, at the end of a particular session, if you want to create a record of that session, um, you will uh, basically sort of archive it. Um, down here on the, to the right of the, let me see where my marker is. Uh, I don't see my marker anywhere. Let's see what I got. Oh, here we are. So um, to the right, to the right here of the uh, chat box is the little hamburger icon, and I can click on that, and it'll say, uh, okay, uh, you can create a session report. So what do you want? Do you want a record summary? Do you want a PDF package? Or, hey, you know what? I'm going to do a combo. So I'm going to combine all my files into one. I'm going to include the attendee list. I'm going to include the document list. I'm going to include uh, the records. Um, and then these are all the columns that I'm going to pull in. Uh, and um, how do I want my report listed, either portrait or landscape? I will go ahead and pick OK to this. Now, that does not archive the project, right? Uh, or, or it doesn't archive, rather, the session. Um, that basically uh, is just keeping a record of what we just did. 
Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, pick that here for building session. And I'll go ahead and pick save. And it goes ahead and creates that. I'm going to go ahead and hop out of the session. Uh, it goes ahead and creates this, right? Uh, and here it is. So here's my demo session. Let me open up the thumbnails. Here's a list of all the files that were worked on. Um, here are the people who joined and did other sorts of things in there. What's nice about this is I can click here, <clears throat> and there's a hyperlink, right? So that takes me right to that particular markup. And I say, oh, what did, what did Dan add here? So I've, I've got that. Um, so I have a complete record of all the files that were in that particular, it looks like a couple of other things got uploaded. Uh, I have a complete record of all of that. And yet that session is still live, right? So if I go back into studio and go back into the demo session, it's still live. Now, if I want to end a session completely, then I have this option here, which is to finish a session. And when I finish the session, it definitely gets archived and removed from the list and the Amazon website.